Welcome viewers to MOOC's online course on visual perception and art, a survey across the cultures. It is the lecture number 19 and it is an extension of our previous topic that is abstract art, hence it is called abstract art 2. Now we have already seen that abstract art or abstraction generally um, tends to pose certain problems with regard to visual perception and our general habit or the familiar process about interpreting art, about making meaning or sense of meaning of some artwork has to take a very different route altogether in order to reach the core idea of any abstraction. Nevertheless, right from the beginning of 20th century, we see a whole lot of artists from different uh, ideas and based on different parameters were working out abstraction in their own ways. So we have somebody like Vladimir Tatlin, a Russian artist who belonged to a movement called constructivism and because they were kind of focusing more on the idea of construction, on the idea of the structural entity of a form rather than what it represents or rather than what it evokes emotionally. Hence, the kind of artworks that we see happening in uh, early 20th century in many places in Europe can be termed as very good, significant and convincing examples of abstract art like this one. And we also know that first two decades of 20th century witnessed the development of a new visual language that privileged independence of form over object recognition. As opposed to the earlier example which belonged to constructivism movement and uh, this one for example cubism or phobism, though in these movement we see a very strong preference for abstraction. They are primarily not completely removed from any kind of representational connection. Now the representational connection became of course very weak and because the emphasis as I said is now more on independence of form or independence of color or independence of shape. But in the earlier artwork by Vladimir Tatlin, if we go back and see it again, we shall see here not only that he has nothing to do with representation altogether, he has nothing to do with form also. He is more into exploring the construction and structural possibilities of a visual entity. Now cubism was certainly one of those movements where the privilege was given more to the independence of form over object recognition. So when you look at these paintings by Picasso titled Guitar Player or this painting titled Girl with a Mandolin, of course the faint presence of recognizability, the faint presence of identities or identification signs, whether it is the human body, human figure or the mandolin or an object are still there, but artist is also trying to supersede these recognizing elements and bring forth the idea of independence of form. Now the process of creating abstraction by breaking an object or figure into its fragments or units also happened in sculpture as we have already seen in the previous class. Now Henry Moore should be considered as 
one of those sculptors belong, belonging to the early phase of uh, 20th century, who did some hundreds of experiments, where he in a way dismantled a figure into units to the extent that though you might have a faint recognition of a figure or a reclining woman or a warrior or something like this, but when you look at the details of the sculpture, what you find is simply unrecognizable abstract shapes and forms. Now, quite a few of these concepts of abstract art emerge from clear cut theoretical concerns worked out within a very specific theoretical frameworks. Apart from cubism, constructivism and minimalism are two such more examples where abstraction was a preconceived well planned theoretically grounded idea, not a spontaneous pictorial outcome of an exploration of visual perception. Cubism was rather a spontaneous outcome of a visual exploration, so was Fauvism, but certainly not constructivism or minimalism which had a very very strong theoretical base to the extent that they were not particularly the constructivist artists and the minimalist artists were not thinking in terms of representation or art as a subject matter representing subject matter at all. They are thinking about something else either about uh, construction of an object or about the structural clarity and the structural character of an object. So, in all these above art movements, it was not visual perception, but an intellectual perception that was the prime thing or the prime concern. However, intellectual perception ultimately left a huge impact on the visual perception as well. For example, this it is a slightly late work by Picasso, where he obviously intends to uh, establish the identity of the form. There is no intention whatsoever to do away with any identity or any recognizing elements. Yet, it is very clear that his earlier engagement with cubism has now left a very strong impact on his later works as well like these two sculptures or for that matter these two sculptures as well. Now, if you look at the works by constructivists, you will feel that constructivists propose to replace art's traditional concern with composition with a focus on construction. So, if you find many works by constructivist artists are compositionally slightly I would not say uh, disbalanced, but uh, slightly uh, incoherent let us say not very symmetrical, not very visually pleasing. It is due to the fact that they are not looking at a work of art whether it is sculpture or painting in terms of a neat well balanced and uh, well organized composition. They are looking at a work of art as a construction. So, objects were to be created not in order to express beauty or the artist's outlook or to represent the world according to the constructivists, but to carry out a fundamental analysis of the materials and forms of art, one which might lead to the design of functional objects. It is interesting that as I uh, mentioned in the context of Mondrian in our previous lecture, here too you find that many of these hardcore abstract artists like constructivists, they were also thinking in terms of functional design. So, abstraction got associated with functional design in the domain of fine arts right from the beginning of 20th century because for many constructivists this entailed an ethic of truth to materials. They were talking about the truth of materials, they were talking about the authenticity of the materials used 
and the belief that materials should be employed only in accordance with their capacities and in such a way that demonstrated the uses to which they could be put. For example, this one, if we are trying to derive some meaning in relation to the real life visual experiences, it is bound to happen that we will be completely misreading the whole sculpture or work of art here. So, we need to enjoy construction, we need to enjoy the structural capacities, we need to enjoy the material capabilities and the material character and authenticities in this sculptures and in this sculpture as well. So, it is not uh, very unlikely or very surprising that one of these artists would declare one day that beauty lies not in curvatures, but in strict geometry. And beauty might also lie in an apparently blank canvas, almost blank canvas like this one painted by Casimir Malevich as uh, early as 1918. It is a kind of, uh, but though he uses the word composition in the title, white square on white, but this composition has got nothing to do with the representational world of a life or the emotional life of the world. It is an independent art form completely or for that matter this one. It is these are all sharing the similar concern about form, shape, object, geometry and most importantly independence of abstract shapes and ideas. So, when Malevich uses colored shapes of various dimensions, he is not ultimately trying to reach an object or a recognizable form, he is simply leaving it there. Now, it is a difficult task for a painter because coming back to visual perception as I told you repeatedly that visual perception tends to identify form, it tends to give meaning to forms, it tends to give some real life familiar identities to an apparently abstract shapes and forms. And an artist would also carry a similar kind of visual perception. So, an abstract painter has to fight or struggle very strongly against this normal flow of the visual perception, which always tries to give meaning and identity to abstract shapes. And when an artist like Malevich gets a grasp over this technique and over this medium and over this method of painting, obviously he could explore and create a whole lot of variations out of it like this one. Now, constructivist art often aimed to demonstrate how materials behaved, to ask for instance what different properties had materials such as wood, glass and metal. The form an artwork would take would be dictated by its materials, not the other way around as is in the case in traditional art forms in which the artist quote unquote transforms base materials into something very different and beautiful. For some, these inquiries were a means to an end, the goal being the translation of ideas and designs into mass production. And for others, it was an end in itself, a new and archetypal modern style expressing the dynamism of modern life. So, interestingly though they were talking about the independence of form, independence of geometric shapes, forms ultimately there is of course, no representation, but definitely there is an association with the real life for constructivists and later on for even minimalists like this work. They believe that this kind of structure, this kind of construction, this kind of art idea reflects the contemporary modern life more than anything else. So, there is a meaning 
inherent in the idea though not representational but the meaning is certainly philosophical and it is certainly there. So, minimalism if you look at minimalism as another uh, area or another art movement where abstraction uh, developed uh, very rapidly and with uh, great ambition then this very denial of expression any emotional expression or representation coupled with an interest in making objects that avoided the appearance of fine art led to the creation of sleek geometric works that purposefully and radically eschew conventional aesthetic appeal. So, when you look at any minimalist artwork or any constructivist artwork it is true that you do not find any conventional aesthetic appeal even the very notion of beauty changes, but our visual perception is habituated or is conditioned by a certain notion of beauty which gets again challenged by these art movements. So, minimalists created works that resembled factory built commodities and upended traditional definitions of art whose meaning was tied to a narrative or to the artist. So, this is also interesting that not only the abstract works created by constructivists or minimalists are devoid of representation they are also devoid of any kind of narrative. For example, when you look at these works by Donald Judd, you do not expect any story to unfold in these works, you do not expect any representation to be identified here. You simply have to understand the meaning and significance of these works in terms of what they physically, visually, geometrically are like this one or for that matter this one or this one. So, you can always ask at which point and how does a simple geometrical structure like this become a work of art. It is here that we need to look back at history and know the context a little bit which I have already discussed and then only you will be able to see that it becomes a work of art by various kind of claims and assertions and all these assertions are very meaningful very significant here assertion of form, geometry, shape, construction, sculpture not as a representation as an object and at the same time the very idea the very faith that now the time has come that this kind of works very appropriately express or relate ourselves with our life nothing else. So, that also gives a lot of faith and the strength to the artists to carry on with this kind of artworks. So, in another art movement which is uh, popularly known as op art because it deals with optical illusion and optical uh, riddles and uh, optical kind of uh, methods and strategies to create various kinds of works of art. So, we have Saul Levitt, we have Joseph Albers here all of them again in their works have nothing to do with narration, nothing to do with representation, even nothing to do with emotion or artists own life. It is about exploring geometry and optical illusions, it is about exploring the possibilities of using lines, shapes in a way that they create a very if not very disturbing, but definitely a very mesmerizing impact on our eyes and that is what these artworks are all about. So, when Albers paints a painting like this square in a square in a square you do not uh, you are not supposed to see a room within the room or within a room in this painting you simply have to respond to the subtle tonal variations and the relationships these shapes and squares create with each other. Now, how do you do that? It is a matter of practice, it is a matter of training our visual perception uh, along this line only that is how that you can 
enjoy to say the least understand and even intellectually engage with this works of art and of course we have plenty of such abstract works all over the world in western art in indian art where abstraction is an outcome of passion very impulsive drawings very impulsive application of colors very passionate engagement with your basic elements of painting like line color shape form space etc can lead to a kind of abstract art which is not certainly geometrical not minimalist not constructivist but definitely very expressionistic though it is not representational of course in this abstract painting there is a little bit of representational element but similar kind of abstract and passionate impulses that drive a painter towards this kind of paintings will have like this one by franz klein will have no such literal narrative representational association at all or this painting by dubuffet again or this painting by the famous painter jackson pollock obviously uh, he these paintings do not have anything to do with any representation but it will be wrong to say that his paintings do not have anything to do with emotionals no definitely an a kind of emotional engagement is there a passionate engagement is there and for many of these painters this passionate and emotional engagements have resulted in beautiful abstract paintings abstract sculptures very different in appearance in look than the abstract artworks created by the constructivists or the minimalists or even the cubists thank you